first This conference one. will now be recorded. The third one may be better than the last one. So seeing yourself successful, as I said, if you're seeing yourself in that same mentality that you were 10 years ago and nothing has changed, something is wrong from within your heart. So therefore you have to see yourself successful in whatever area, whatever aspect of life that you wanna be in, you have to see it. It don't matter what your best friends say, it don't matter what your mates say, your husband, your boyfriend, your sister, your brother, it's what you see. If you see yourself as a successful business, black-minded woman, grow into that. Find ways that will help you expound in your gift. Make yourself a vision board. Now, I can be honest, I have not, but I have a journal and a planner. I, I write everything down in my journal and I write everything down in my planner. Making yourself a vision board lets you see the vision. And then what another thing you can do check it off when it's done check it off boom i accomplished that boom i accomplished this that's how we grow that's how we build the confidence i say okay well if i know i can accomplish one thing on my vision board i can accomplish it all not some did you hear the key word all so whatever goals whatever aspiration that you may have make yourself that vision board ladies get into it write what you want to have on it you put, you can put pictures, you can put your words, you can also recite your um, affirmation of self-love on there to include that, to remind yourself, this is where I am. However, this is where I'm going. And when you put that into a vision board, it all comes together and you start checking those things off. Hey, that's building confidence. Cause guess what? You accomplishing your goals and you're building yourself up while you're doing that. What can shatter confidence? And a woman being bullied, a parent who doesn't build you up, friends who make fun of you, and being in a new environment can also kind of bring us down a little bit because we're not adapted just yet. Compare, this is the main one, compare yourself to others. You know, they got all these reality shows, they got the housewives, they got everybody. They got all the rappers, they got the stars, they got the singers, they got the actress, the actress, actresses. We can't compare ourselves there. We got to compare ourselves to who? Us, whom we are within. Matter of fact, compare yourself to where you were yesterday and compare yourself to where you are today. Let's get it in our mind. Then you move forward. If there's anything that needs to be addressed within yourself that you feel like you did not accomplish on yesterday, how can I get that done today? What can I do to rebuild myself and my confidence that I felt like I felt? um ashamed or if i felt discouraged what can i do to build that up from the previous time to the current time so that i won't feel that way anymore because it stops within you so let me ask you this come on sis both, can you go back to the, the slide before this one absolutely so I, I absolutely love the points that you say, what builds confidence. Um, when it comes to the vision board, can you explain to the ones that may not know how to start a vision board? Let's because get you, do have, you do have some people that they hear the word vision board, but don't know where to start. You get what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I could tell you, okay, what is your vision? You know, put it on a vision board. You know, can you ex expound on that just a little bit more? Yes, ma'am. I would be lo I love to. So basically what you do to build your vision board, I would say you can start out with a little poster board. They got them at the Dollar Tree. You ain't even got to spend nothing expensive. You take you a Sharpie, a pen, pencil, color crayon, whatever you would like to use you create, you write it down. Even if you just brainstorming and jotting down, start with five things. I say, don't overwhelm yourself. Start with five ob obtainable goals. We all know that everything is possible. So start with five obtainable goals. Get you a poster board. It doesn't have to be expensive. Get you some old magazines. They got the dollar store too. If you want to put pictures or something on there, they're included. 
whether it being okay say i have a, i do have a vision i have a vision vision to complete this home i'm going to complete decorating the rooms how i want it getting my light fixtures done so therefore i'm gonna put a picture of a home finish remodeling home that's one thought the second thing that i'm going to achieve before 2020 and 2021 2022 is obtaining uh, my master's degree so i want to put down a book or i can put down a cap and gown because that's the goal right you put down the goal you can paste the pictures you can draw them if you're a good draw i can't draw i can draw y'all a pretty heart that's it <laughs> your girl can't draw but she can definitely <laughs> goodness i can definitely copy and paste a picture even off the internet if i have a, a picture of a book or you know my graduation date write that down put on the board a third thing i say um i also want to do and improve is starting my own holistic beauty bar in a building i want to start selling products out of the building so therefore i will put my products on the vision board right underneath there the goal of what I exactly what I want to be as precise as you can put it in there because once you speak it out of the mouth it's in the atmosphere so you've spoken that positive positivity into your own life because I can attain my own holistic beauty bar I will get there so if I'm putting it on the vision board and pasting my pictures or whatever I want to put words or pictures either or whichever your preference put on that vision board so that you can see it and i tell people to hang it up somewhere that you pass by every day whether it be the hallway the bathroom put it somewhere that you can see it every day kitchen we in the kitchen every day we like to cook ladies on it put in that kitchen and hang it up so when you pass by there oh i, I see i gotta work something i gotta i ain't been working on this goal let me go ahead and tighten that on up now <laughs> Right and I there. think you know, I think you know, one of the hardest things for me is failure, you know, and, and that goes to the next slide, you know. But these four points that you have, I absolutely need because I do get discouraged at times, you know. I do, um, when things don't go the way that I want them to, it's like, you know what. I'm done. I, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, so I need to like screenshot this slide because these are the points that I need. You know, I've gotten to the point where I'm not worried about anybody else. I do see myself successful, but it's the affirmations that I need to practice. You know, I need to sit down and I do need to make my vision board. I do need to bring my vision to A. Hey, you know, so I absolutely love this slide, you know, and that's why I wanted you to go back because I, I wanted you to explain how can we get started doing this? We are gonna start whenever you wanna start since you let me know, cause I'm gonna start with you. I don't have a vision board yet. Like I said, I got my planner and I write in my journal. However, if we wanna put it on a board and we can get it where we can see the visual, let's get on it. We're right, gonna start right. by getting us a poster board. We're gonna start by researching things that's gonna help us get to our goal. And that's what we're gonna start. Right. So let's get to it. Let's do it. Let's do and it. And you know what? It's okay. the perfect time to start. You don't start on December 31st. You start six months prior so you can get a head start, right, sis? All right yes. now. Come on. <laughs> it's like a race. You don't start training the day of, you start training before. <laughs> and we in the middle of the year and it's the perfect time to get with it huh sis right, all yes, right and i said that you know i absolutely claim that i'm gonna finish 2021 with a bang so this is the this is the first step awesome i'm glad to hear it baby that's a good thing lauren do you want to have anything to add anything on the um what builds confidence no, I'm loving. I'm loving every part of it. Yay! Thank you. I'm glad. All right, let's see. Now that's the shattering of the confidence. Now, since I know you said the fear of failure now. We all have that. That's why I put it on there last, because that's something that we can expound on all together. We've all had fears of stepping out on that limb. 
I'm gonna ask Lauren because Lauren has been quiet. <laughs> yes, that's my drug. I love so Lauren. I love she got a beautiful spirit. What is something that you have used as a tactic to help you overcome your fear? Um, my why. You know, that's something that I think everyone has to be able to identify what their why is. Because when all else is done, and when everybody's gone, if you just keep failing after failing, you just feel low, you got to reach back to your why. Why are you doing this? Why, why, why? Keep asking yourself why. When you answer that question, ask yourself why again. Ask yourself why, why, why? And that will fuel you. Your why will always be there. Your why will continue to evolve. It'll continue to change, but it will be constant. It is that one thing that'll never leave you, that whenever you're feeling low or you feel like, oh, I'm just not passionate about this anymore. Why did you do it to begin with? You get back to the basics because everything else can cloud your judgment. You know, it's like a baby, a baby. They are so relentless babies and kids because they still have that innocence about them. But as humans and as adults, we've been gone through so many failures until that discouragement. It kind of just like piles up, piles up, piles up. And then we stop and we become crippled in fear. We become crippled and our confidence leaves us. But if you're like a baby and you go back to your basic instincts of that why of I just know I got to get this. I just know I'm hungry for it. Then it will never stop. You'll never stop. You'll keep going on and on and on. So just going back to that why, it always will boost your confidence. It'll always keep you moving. Thank you, Lauren. When I said you said that thing, baby, we don't need nothing else after that. <laughs> she spoke that and thing. And that's, I, I go back to like what Lauren was just saying. When I feel when I feel like I have failed or let myself down, I do go back to why did I start Black Girl Interrupted? Why? Black Girl Interrupted is my safe space. Black Girl Interrupted is when I can't write what I'm feeling. I can get on here and I can explain to you how I'm feeling. I can talk to you about how I'm feeling. Um, so. I go back to the why. I go back to, I wanted to be the voice for the little black girl who's now a beautiful black woman who is afraid to, to speak. I want to be her voice. That's why I started Black Girl Interrupted. I'm so sorry, y'all. I try not to get emotional. It's just the passion behind why I do Black Girl Interrupted. And I, I, I'm definitely going when she says go back to the why. And I do. And maybe I let me let me not say maybe I know I need to write down the why. That's it. And go back to that. So on the days that I'm like, oh, this is why you do this, Ashley. This is why you do that. This is why you do this. So I I'm going to make that a point effective today to write down the whys in regards to Black Girl Interrupted. Why do I do this? And that's when we're gonna get that vision board. That's when that comes to play. We're gonna write it down so that we can see it. And as Lauren stated earlier, going back to that why. We're gonna, matter of fact, we're gonna put the why on the vision board. That's gonna be the first thing that should be right in the center. And you should put everything around it as your why. That's what needs to happen. And that'll have your reminder. That's a good, gentle reminder of where you should go back to that center, your core, yes, your why. I absolutely agree. All right, sis. I'm loving it. We're going to go ahead. And... Now, how can confidence be rebuilt? As I said earlier, reciting those affirmations taking risks it don't matter if somebody say oh i don't think that's a good idea but if you feel it in your heart take it go with your first mind always seeing the beauty in other women it's not it ain't gonna kill nobody to compliment a woman on her goals on her achievements do that compliment them beauty it's beauty in accomplishing a graduation right because that's something that you had to work hard to obtain. 
You had to work hard for your degree. So compliment that. That's a beautiful thing when I see black women and men graduating, especially women, because guess what? Women still got to take care of the house. You still have kids to raise. You have to uh, not only raise your kids, you have to still take time for self. So that's a lot on women sometimes. But a strong-minded black woman can't be deterred from the left nor the right because she has a ton of vision. She has that straightforward mindset and that goes into practicing self-reflection. If you feel that, I always do a self-evaluation. I self-reflect a lot. If it's like I said, if something I could have done better, I'm going to write it down in my journal and I'm going to go back to that and say, okay, well, this is something I could have achieved in a shorter time frame that I maybe procrastinated on. Let me self-reflect and get my mindset back on track, regroup, and then figure out how to achieve it in a shorter distance or a shorter term. So I say when you practice self-reflection, again, journaling is good. Write it down in your journal. Write it down. We have a phone. We all got cell phones, right? Write it down in that notepad that Apple gave you or Android, whoever you got. Write it down in that note and say, I can do this. I can achieve this. And if it's something that comes to your mind, maybe you're sitting, um, maybe you're just sitting on a break or something at work. Or maybe you're just sitting on your couch watching TV and something comes to your mind. You don't have your pen and paper. Get that, you know, we got that cell phone always on the hill. Get that cell phone out and write it in your notepad and then go back and write that on your vision board. So that you can have that remembrance, right? See if you got something to say, come on. I'm just, you know, I, today was absolutely much needed. You know, as, as you move through these slides, again, I'm going, now it's taking me back to the why. So I'm like, you know what? I got to keep going with this. You know, the self-reflection, spot on, spot on with that. Absolutely spot on with that. And, and you know, I don't mind taking a risk. I don't I, I'm doing it. <laughs> and that's what I'm, I'm talking about. More. more women like that. Take that risk. Hmm. You already know how we come and see. I told you, I, I'm so confident. Like I said, I want 2021. I'm ending 2021 with a bang. A bang. I'm absolutely ending 2021 with a bang. I'm excited for it. I'm ready to see it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm like I say, I'm absolutely ending 2021 with a bang. It's coming. It's coming to happen. I believe you. Let me see what else I got. I'm going to mute the mic. Go ahead. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can self-reflect and I know we can do it all day long. Right. So this is what I tell people about this. If you're not feeling confident, you're stressing, this is a coping kit. You got to learn how to build your coping kit. Now, I know we grown, we like to drink. Drinking is not a coping kit. Do you see alcohol on here? No. <laughs> My little wine, but I'll go to it every time I get the stress out, okay? Sometimes alcohol ain't there. So alcohol is not on there. Do a hobby. You see all these hobbies on here? Let me get on the screen so I can see. I don't have my glasses. I got to clean them a little bit. Here we go. This little girl here is dancing. If y'all, I have my porn number. This little girl here is dancing. We got somebody planting. You see my plants behind me? How tall mm -hmm. she is? My baby. She tall, isn't it? See, <laughs> planting. Or do something that like a garden. This one right here, exercise. That's the, woo, exercise that can not only help your health, but it helps your mental health. Because you are working off that stress, working off that pain, working off that agony, working off whatever failures you feel like you do. And when you're working out and that muscle start to get built, oh, honey, guess what? You not only helped your body, you just helped your mind. Meditation. I'm all, I like yoga. 
I do a little yoga sometimes when I don't have no uh silk press. <laughs> I do me some oh. yoga. Nah. Reading, I love to read. That's one of my favorite hobbies. Y'all don't see me having I don't have no TVs in here, but reading is one of my have always been since I was a little girl. My grandma's a voucher. She'll tell me. I told her what I wanted for Christmas one year. I said I want some books. No toys. I wanted all books. Mama said, You want books? My grandma said, You want books? Show sure no, I wanted all books. I love to read. Reading not only keeps your mind active and that mental health good, it also um, is knowledgeable for you. It's, you're obtaining knowledge while you're reading. It don't matter what the subject is, whatever your preference. If you like fiction, nonfiction, if you like biography, autobiographies, if you like mystery books, find you something that you like to do. And you see this lady right here. Now, she ain't at the flower. She in the bathtub. Take you a relaxing bubble bath. Ain't nothing like a relaxing bubble bath. Y'all ladies know about them. Mm. Music. I play the piano as well. Uh, I love music. Music is great therapy. Great therapy. Whatever your genre of music that you like, put it on. When you start to feel bad, that uplifts your spirit. That builds your confidence. All right, the last one we got for a hobby we got is art. Now, like I said, I can't draw, but we can paint. I know how to paint a little bit, though. Y'all can do the little painting. You can um get your vision board. That could be, look, that little canvas that man got in this little um picture. That could be the start of the vision board right there. It's just a little canvas, just like that. And he got that right in the middle, that little blue splash of green or teal. That's the why. Put that wire right there, smack that in the middle, and then you come on around and it goes all around that and build on that. That's what we're doing on how to practice meditation. Meditate. You have to do that because that aligns your spirit with your soul, with your mind and your body. You're relaxing your body. You're removing all worry, all stress and doubt from your mind, and you're just releasing that. Do deep breathing exercise. Inhale. Exhale. That's all it takes. And you can feel your heart rate go down. You can feel that smile coming down and you just smile. And while you inhale again, and you just close your eyes and you just release it. Do deep breathing exercises to help that coping mechanism inside your soul. Say, okay. I'm overloading my brain. Let me take a step back to regroup, breathe, because you got to breathe to live. And then you continue to go on for whatever goals or accomplishment that you are trying to achieve. Because you're one person. We are one. We can't do everything by ourselves. So we have to breathe. Even if you have to seek advice from somebody else, Get that advice from them. I always advise, get that advice from them. They can help you. Allow somebody to help you. Don't be independent all the time. We have to be independent women. But sometimes we need another sister, uh, another queen with more knowledge than what we have to assist us in our goals and aspirations. Come on, your sister, say it out. We don't. Yeah, we do. All right, now, yeah. I know we need it. And I think that's what I need to do. I need to I need to step out of my comfort zone. <laughs> and right, start now. really networking. And you know, I, I really do. I, I I I'm so comfortable with just staying inside my little box. And I know I need to come out of my little box. You know, but it's and I think the reason I stay in that little box is because. I've poured into so many people to the point my cup is run dry. And it's like when I've been open, you know, with people, it's like they turn around and they throw it back at my feet. So it's like here I am in this little bitty box. And it's almost like I'm afraid to step out and, and be open and vulnerable. But then it's like here I am doing my podcast. So I have to make it make sense. But Again, that's that's my therapy. You know, I'm I'm absolutely with you when it comes to the music. Um, I could cut on. I I wake up. 
I love Yolanda Adams. I, I so yeah. love her. And when I'm in a zone or I'm, you know, having one of those moments, I'm like, I can't say it too loud because I don't want her to cut off, but I'll say, play Yolanda Adams, and I just let it roll. And I laugh, I cry. I more so cry, but I'm cleansing at the same time. And then I I, I feel a, a release. So I, I'm going to work out of coming out of my little box that I that I put myself in and, and open up and allow myself to bloom like a flower in a garden. Love it. I love it. Lauren, do you have anything to say on this one? You muted, honey. Uh, it takes it takes so long for the music to go out, but no, I am just I'm just nodding my head in agreement. You know, having a coping kit that is so helpful. You know, um, when we allow ourselves to relax, relate, and breathe, then it changes our body physically. Physically, it does. It's it's a proven fact that when we Take a deep breath. We're letting our oxygen flow. We're releasing the stress. We're releasing the frustration. We're doing all of that. And we're getting to a point where you're allowing your body to physically be at peace. You know, you're releasing these things. In your body. So that coping kit, I'm, I'm all for it. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm glad we got to just talk. now we have to put it um, implemented in our lives. We have to go ahead and start doing this. We have to start today because tomorrow's not promised. Right, Sis? Because yes, we don't know. Look, y'all see, I'm putting my notes in. Well, you probably can't see your uh -huh. but... Come on. Like I'm, I said, I'm we all carry these phones. Get it in a notepad, baby. Get it in there. <laughs> I love it. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. Now, this is the one I'm loving right here. We want to say it out loud. So I want to hear, sis, I'm going to say one, and sis, I want you to get the next one, and Lauren, you're going to get the next one, all right? I am ambitious. I am beautiful. I am confident. I am determined. I am more than enough. Come, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sis. I am worthy. There we go. Now, when we speak that thing, we have spoken it out over our life, and we're going to speak it over all the women's lives, that we are all of these six things. I am ambitious. We are ambitious. We are beautiful. We are confident. We are determined. We are more than enough. Because since I didn't add the more than, but I'm going to say it. We are more than enough, and we are worthy. Now, when we speak these Don't things you. over our lives and other women's lives, guess what? We just uplifted that woman. And we want to uplift each other. There's so much stuff in this world, chaos. I mean, all over here. But if we have that one person to go to that can help uplift our spirit through all the, the grief that we may have experienced with all of the anxiety, depression that women go through, Saying these things to them is more, more than enough. It's a beautiful thing for them. Encourage yourself when nobody else can. You say these things that you are. You're uplifting your whole heart right then. Just touch on yourself. Say, I am ambitious. I am beautiful. I am more than enough. Sis said it. I love sis said that. I changed this life for the next go round. We're going to say, I am more, <laughs> more than enough. I love it. I had to take a picture of that. I, I want to take your time. Put it up every day, every day. You know, there's so many days that I want to quit. It's a lot of days. I have a lot of days that I want to quit. So I needed this today. I, I needed exactly what's on this screen today. This, and I know that. You are, I told you, you are a strong, beautiful, ambitious, determined woman. So guess what? Quitting is not in our tongue. We don't even speak that. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. We may feel like that, but guess what? That's when we go back to this other slide. When we do that hobby and we do that deep breathing exercise and that failure, when Lauren said, 
you putting your body at peace. And that was enough right there. You have to release that. That quitting spirit, that's got to go. That got to be eliminated. Because we have to keep going. Black girl interrupting is going to help millions of women. Not just a few, millions. And you have to know that in your heart and your soul. Quit that an option because guess what? If you're not there to do that, then how the girls are going to be uplifted? How are we going to build self-confidence in these women, in these younger girls? We can't quit. We got to keep going. Keep persevering until you get to where you want to be. And then you persevere some more because you can't stop once you get to where you want to be. You can't stop there. You got to keep obtaining higher and higher and higher. Every, and we taking it one step at not two steps one step at a time because you want to make sure that you know that in your heart you're not overloading your plate and that's when we feel like we want to give up but we're not going to do that mm -mm, the plate may be overloaded but we won't give up we have to feed ourselves in portions we can't it overstuff our belly because we're going to be bloated, right? So we have to feed ourselves in portions the same thing with things of the spirit of our mind. We know we can't obtain all our goals in one night. We know we can't do this stuff in two weeks. It may take six months to a year to obtain where we want to be. However, that's when you portion it out. You ration it out to where you want it to be. And it all will come together. It will all come together. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I absolutely do. I like that. Yes. And we know this. This is something that we know. Let's see. I think I, that's it for me. So you can follow me on social media. That's the business page. And put my personal page. That's the business pages. And that's all that I have. And I appreciate you guys for listening to me. And again, I am Janelle, the CEO of Anointed Blessings LLC. Hit me up on these social medias, and I'm here. Okay, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to roll because I'm going to let Miss Lauren in this one today. Because when I tell you, if you've ever been, you have to go in the room with her. Because whenever I am able to jump into a room with her on Clubhouse, oh, I'm sorry, on Clubhouse. Oh, I leave so refreshed. I leave energized. I leave pumped and ready, you know, to take on the world. Because between her and the other young ladies in the room, they are forever dropping gems, always dropping some type of gem. Um, so I take those gems that she dropped and I put them in my jewelry box. You know, because I definitely want to fill my jewelry box up with all the jewels and all the gems in the world. So, Janelle, I'm going to need you to share the screen. Janelle, I'm going to need you to pull the slides up. Oh, there she is. Okay. There we go. Oh, all right, all right. So my name is Ashley Pitt, and I am Black Girl Interrupted, AKA the creator of Black Girl Interrupted, AKA your favorite 504 girl. <laughs> That's what I go by. So. Black Girl Interrupted, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Black Girl Interrupted is, let me, let me say this. I created Black Girl Interrupted from pain. Black Girl Interrupted came from my place of pain. Black Girl Interrupted became my therapy session. Um, as you guys know, you know, mental health is, is absolutely big in the Black community. We don't talk about it. Um, Therapy was so, speaking with a therapist was so taboo, so I created my own safe space. 
Um, hence, Black Girl Interrupted. Black Girl Interrupted, these are my personal stories. These are not stories that, you know, I've just pulled out of a hat or just say, hey, let me just do something. These are my stories. This is my journey. This is my journey of coming from a Black girl that is dealing with interruptions to a woman that's learning how to face her interruptions. So, hence, Black Girl Interrupted. So, Black girl, let's rock. Go ahead, sis. Hey. Yeah, you got to go to the... There you go. All right. So, for me, my discussions for today... I want to talk about colorism, body image, and self-esteem, especially by especially self-esteem in this day and age. Man, us black girls, all the flaws that we hate, people are now paying to have. So I want us as black queens to pull off the mask, stop living behind the facade. And let's embrace our beautiful, confident self. So I'm ready, sis. All right. So colorism. Light versus dark. Does color even really matter? Because in my eyes, every shade of black is beautiful. And and I actually did an episode on colorism because I wanted to know if colorism is still prominent in this day and age. And speaking with some ladies after the show, it is. And it, it is happening inside our own race. You have lighter shade women that don't like darker shade women, and then you have darker shade women that don't like lighter shade women. Why? Every woman needs to know and understand. We are all created differently, but we're all born beautiful, no matter the shade, no matter the light, the dark, the in-between, every shade of black to me, and I'm going to continue to say it, is beautiful. You can go to the next one, sis. So again, what is colorism? It's the subjective ranking of individuals according to the perceived color tones of their skin. I've always heard light skin is prettier than dark skin. Even if you look at the media and, and you look at videos, and, and I really don't want to go back to the slave days, but the lighter shade, black women were in the home, while the darker shade, black women were outside in the field, even in movies. We talked about how the lighter shade women always got the better parts in movies and the darker shade women always played slaves. Um, they always played something that was in the background as if that darker shade was not beautiful. But I want all black women to know it. And again, I know this may sound repetitive, but I'm going to continue to say it. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. I don't care if you're light dark, whatever color of the spectrum, you're beautiful to me. So I think we as black women, we have to stop the colorism and learn to embrace the, the way God created us. Love your skin. Because like I say, every, all the flaws that we don't like, guess what? You have people out here that are paying to look just like us. You have People going to tanning salons, you have them going to get lip injections, um, BBLs, and all those things that we hated, people are going to get now. So embrace that. Embrace the beauty, regardless of your shape. You can go next, sis. Woo! So... I'm going to stop right here on this slide for just a moment because I do want your, want your input. Do you think light skin is more privileged than dark skin? Yes or no? So, Ms. Lauren, I'm going to ask you because I, I remember you yesterday in the room that I was in with you. You shared your story. 
So do you think light skin is more privileged than darker skin? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that it, um, it, it depends on the people that you're around. It depends on privilege to who, privileged where, you know, um, certain parts of the country, they're still different than other parts of the country. Certain families still have that colorism type mentality. You know, my, my children, of course, you already know they're fair skin. My, mm -hmm. my children are fair skin. I'm brown skin. My husband's very fair skin. And people will comment on the color of their skin. They like the color of their skin. We, my parents, they say it all the time, but they'll even make comments that are colorist comments and say, you know, your kids get away with a lot because of the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it. I've seen it. I have, um, you know, uh, nephews and cousins who are darker skin. My kids could be doing the same thing, but they get the brunt end of the stick. Or, you know, they they get told to stop or behave this type of way. We've seen I've I've been around, I have darker skinned friends, or even myself, where I was I was told, you know, I'm dark skinned, but I still I'm I'm pretty still and all these other things. So colorism is real, especially in the South. <laughs> you know, and it's real in our families. It's it's so bad in our families still, where, you know, I'll have relatives and they'll be like, Ooh, you you make some pretty little light skin babies. Why the light skin part? You know, why is that still an issue? Why is it, why is it where you have the dark skin and light skin thing still? And like you said, it goes back further because we have been so separated by the color of our skin within the black community, even, you know, from not just slavery, but even in the sixties and the seventies and, and the thirties and twenties with W.E.B. Duval, where he called the 20% of the African-American community are going to lead the people. You know, this was before the integration where, you know, we were fighting for equality and everything. And that 20 percent, those black people, they were more fair skinned. They were more considered more educated because they had more opportunities than a lot of the darker skinned black people. And then what happened when integration happened, when integration occurred, then those black people left. You know, and, and then you had this idea of, oh, the darker skinned people, they aren't as refined. They aren't as educated, you know, and they were still to this day. A lot of lighter skinned people are treated much better than darker skinned people. It's unfortunate, but it's real. Right. You know, I remember because I, I have a son and two daughters and my baby girl is the fairest of my three children. So, um. At the time, I want to say my baby girl was maybe a year old. And uh, my middle child, at the time, she was eight, maybe nine, eight, maybe nine. I, I want to say my baby girl was maybe one or two. But anyways, um, my daughter asked, is Chase going to get any darker? And, you know, and it pained me. For my child to, you know, to, to make that type of, or to ask that, you know, type of question. And I had to explain to her, God makes us in all shapes. Light, dark, brown skin. And I had to let her know she's still beautiful. I had to explain that to her. And it hurt me to my heart for her to feel that way. You know, that. She, you know, for her to ask that question, was my baby girl going to get any darker? And even to this day, my baby girl is, is still the fairest of my children. I've had uh, Caucasian people ask me, is your baby mixed? And I'm like, what? I'm from Louisiana. We come in all shades. You know, my dad. His mother was fair skinned. His dad was dark skinned. My dad and his sister were the fairest. Mm -hmm. And then my dad's other sister were about the same color. She may be just a, a, a tad bit lighter than me. And then my dad's brother is dark. But they have the same mom and dad. So it, it, it just I just want people to I just want people to know that, you know, like you say, Lauren. Colorism really does, it exists, you know, but we have to stop doing that amongst each other. That's one of the things we have to stop. Oh, 
she's pretty for a light skin girl or oh she's cute for a dark skin girl that's like saying oh she's cute for a, a big girl why can't she just be cute mm -hmm. or why can't she just be pretty so janelle what do you think do you think that <laughs> you're going too fast go back to fly so now do you think light skin is more privileged than dark skin you have to unmute your mic Oh, I think her, her is going crazy. I think it's going crazy. Let's see. I think her mic is going. Yes, it was, sis. I got it now. <laughs> okay. I was like, wait a minute. There we go. All right, there we go. So, yes, I do believe that because, like, growing up, um i learned about our history a lot about our history i took an african-american history class and they were explaining about that the colorism okay they were explaining how the fair-skinned women how they were raped and as well as dark-skinned women all they raped anybody at the time whoever they could get basically if they were um owned or by a slave slave owners and slave owners would rape those women and that's how we came about correct so if we're thinking about that and that's what our ancestors has to go had to go through had to endure in order for us to be where we are today and i think about that they had them in the homes back in the day to be able to do as they please to the woman so i would say back in the day were they privileged heck no because they were being abused raped i mean in its form of abuse whether if you were in the field or in the home they still were raped they still were hurt as women which is horrible 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 and my oldest cousin who's still alive she's 101 and she would talk about how they would go out there and clean them up clean up the women and get them together and put them and put them for sale dark skin light skin it didn't matter what color i wish i can get her to speak on that but she uh she's sick right now but she enlightened us about what happened back in those days because she lived through that and i say that nowadays absolutely are they more privileged absolutely i feel like we don't get it in the workplace because they don't they think that all blacks are equivalent no matter in their eyes but other black people do frown upon other um darker skin me i prefer them chocolate i like mine it don't matter what shade of form a black person is we are all beautiful if you're light skin if you're dark if you're medium tone if you're fair skin it doesn't matter just, as long as you know really who you are would you say i'm sorry sis go ahead baby no, no, go ahead. i didn't mean to interrupt i'm too far you are right I was just going to say that it doesn't matter what shade or form of skin we are. We are beautifully, wonderfully made women. And not only are we beautifully and wonderfully made, we're also, we can appreciate each other for whom we are. It doesn't make us any different. It doesn't make you better than anybody if you light skin. It doesn't make you better than anybody because you're dark. We're all equal. We all We are one we are one people we are one generation we are one as women so i would say that we shouldn't 
judge anyone by that. A skin color don't matter. Right. And that's that's kind of it that kind of expound into racism because they don't care what color we are. They still shoot at us, they still try to kill us. It don't matter what you were light skin or dark skin, doesn't matter. But so when it comes to no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. I'm finished. I'm through back. But when it comes to colorism, I, I, I want to, I'm speaking to us ladies because we do shun each other. You know, I was in a room on Clubhouse and um, I'm going to say this and then we're going to roll to the, uh, to the next slide. And the topic was, are light-skinned women black? So, you know, I stuck my head in for just a moment because, you know, colorism, I, 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 I know it exists, but I just despise the conversation because I think all black women, I think we're all beautiful. And so one of the young ladies who happened to be a darker shade said, white, uh, black, light skinned women are more privileged than dark skinned women. And basically she wishes that she would have been light. And so, you know, of course, everybody chimed in, but one lady told her, you have to love who you are. You have to love who you are. And she made a comment, and, and I've used this. She said, just because of your light doesn't make you pretty, and just because you're dark, it doesn't mean you're ugly. I was like, wow. That That's was kind of deep on that. That was deep on that part. So yeah, I agree with everything that was said. I think light skin is more privileged than dark skin. Me, I'm in between. I'm 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 brown. And I love it. I think I'm beautiful. I think Lauren is beautiful. Janelle, everybody, I think every black woman is beautiful. Light, dark, caramel, whatever color you want to call yourself, I think you're beautiful. Okay, sis, so you can go to the next one. All right. So who are who you are? You have to accept who you are. You have to accept who you are. Women yeah. of color. Wow. So I like this little graph you have that you that you put on here, where it says 44.2% women of color desire smaller bodies. 25% were displeased with their hair texture. And then 30.5%, I'm sorry, 30.8% were displeased with the overall appearance. That's a big percentage that I absolutely agree with. I, I go on, again, when I did this episode on colorism, you go back and, and you look at the things that women have done. Um, I think one of the pictures um, I posted was, uh, what's her name? Viola Davis who, no, not Viola Davis, um, Leslie, y'all help me out. She was on, um, she's, she's on Saturday Night Live, but she was shunned because she was a darker skinned woman. And people teased her to the point where she had disabled her social media account. And Leslie again, Jones. Is, what's her name? Is it Leslie Jones? Yes, yes, that's her. The one that people, they really shunned her on social media. They bullied her because she was a dark-skinned woman. Mm. So, yes, she disabled her social media accounts. They, they bullied her. They talked about the color of her skin. I think some comments said, oh, she needed to go back to Africa. She looked like a, a monkey. So that plays the overall part in that 30.8% when people say they're displeased with the overall appearance because people will make you feel that way. And if you're told that your entire life, you start to believe that. So therefore you see these women that are running and, and they're going to get their skin lightened. You run and you see these people that are um, like Tiny, for example. She wasn't pleased with her eye color, so she went in and paid all this money to change her eye color. Um, 
you'll see us, you know, using relaxers because we don't like the texture of our hair. It's too kinky. It's too thick. So we're trying to do everything we can to straighten it out. Me, on the other hand, I'm natural. My hair has been natural for the last seven years now. Me too, I'm sis. Embr- that I'm embracing all my, my, my beautiful blackness, like I said. You go back to these flaws. I hated my freckles for a long time. I hated them. As you can see, I have a face full of them. But now you see women are paying to get freckles. You see women that are paying to get bigger breasts. You see women that are paying to get bigger butts. That's a self-esteem thing. And at the end of the day, we have to start learning to accept who we are and the way that God created us. By all means, I don't want any woman to say, oh, she's against plastic surgery or whatever. Because if I could afford it, I would probably get a little light over here, a little sucky puff here. But I'm just learning now to embrace who I am. I'm embracing. I'm embracing the fact that I've had three three babies. I, I have a mama body. You know, anything that I want to change, I'm going to do it for the, for the health of me, not because of what society says I should look like or who I should be. So any changes that I'm going to make that I don't like, I'm going to do it for me. And again, not for what the world says, not for what the society says. Miss Lauren, do you have anything to say in regards to this current slide? No, for me, um, You know, I always felt some type of way about um, myself as it as it pertains to white people, because um, that's what I was, you know, raised around in my high school years with me being the only black girl in my high school. So I had to deal with seeing all these different all these not different type, the same type of people. (laughs) And I didn't see on a daily basis outside of my home. Or, you know, going to church and everything, but that didn't really count because to me, what mattered was like the mainstream because I was a teenager and I'm seeing all these people. They don't have to worry about the hair. They don't have to worry about, you know, all these other things that black women and black, you know, little black girls have to worry about. You know, they're they're not in on these conversations that other people are having about their hair and whatever else. My hair was short, you know, and so I had those insecurities. I had so, so, so many insecurities. And then those insecurities, it filtered into my relationship with other black women because I did not know how to function around them because I didn't build that relationship. I didn't have those conversations that were empowering for our bodies and for our hair and our appearance and things like that. And so, you know, the issue, you know, with hair extensions and braids and natural hair, that was something that I'd always been so fearful to do because I did not have a group of people around me that was empowering saying, you know, wear your hair, you know, do this and do that until I got older. And so, um, you know, accepting who we are is so important because we are the minority still. We're not considered when you open up a magazine, you'll have one token black woman in there like Beyonce or Rihanna. But when they're naming all the other beautiful women, it's going to be white women. So accepting who we are and understanding that the noise doesn't matter. How you feel about yourself matters. So, you know, um, accepting it is huge. And and to kind of piggyback off of what you just said, accepting, you know, my baby girl, she's 11 now, and she wants the long hair like the Barbie dolls, like like the Caucasian Barbie dolls. And I had to explain to her, your hair doesn't doesn't does not grow like that. You know, mm-hmm. her hair is very kinky. Um, in regards to my, my middle daughter, you know, my middle daughter is it, thick, but it's you know, if you flat iron it out, you know, it just, mm-hmm. it, it moves. My baby girl's hair is not like that. She's more, uh, she's, they have two different textures of hair. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so when she gets her, she loves to get the braids, you know, and she wants mm-hmm. some long, long. But I have to tell her, no, you're 11. <laughs> I, you have to look like an 11 year old little girl. Mm-hmm. But, I, and I think now she's starting to 
see other little black girls that look mm -hmm. more like her. Because where we live, it, it's a mix of people. You have black, you have white, you have Asian, you have Indian, you know, Hispanics. But her, her best friend has the fine curly hair. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not mixed, but she's got the better texture of hair. So my, my baby girl was envious of that and I had to explain to her. So mm -hmm. I think now she's starting to come into and accept, you know, her black her her, her black roots. Because mm -hmm. maybe she likes to wear the hair out now. She likes it in a, in an afro. Mm -hmm. She loves yeah. it. She doesn't it, want to call. It. It's crazy how um, confident our young girls are today versus I know when my age, I would have never been confident enough to wear my hair, you know, in its natural state, even to cut my hair this low. My um, similar to just what you said, like my daughter, Dallas, she has very kinky hair. You know, it's puffy. She has her Afro puffs, but there's so much more representation out there now versus what we had back in the day you know all my barbies were like white i might get a little a little light skin little tannish barbie here now and then but my barbies were white my dolls were white and nowadays like my daughter she's like oh yes look at that i want my lol hairstyle like this you know you got all these different type of dolls they look like her and um you know all these shows the show girls on the shows they look like her and so she's always so confident in in her hair and one day at school you know her school's not very diverse and um you know she always she likes to wear her hair out on like picture days or else it'll be braided or in ponytails because it takes too long but she was like yeah i'm gonna wear my hair out i'm gonna put my curls she's like i'm gonna show my curls you know her like, kinky curls and so um she she was just proud of it and then you know one day she was like um some people at my school said in my class said that they didn't like my hair and they laughed at it and it brought me back it 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 made me realize that i had a lot of trauma as a black woman growing up with insecurities about my hair and um i don't know i know zevi was on earlier but he'll tell you that morning i cried i was angry I was just hurt. I was sad for her, but mostly even for myself because it took me back to a dark place to where I felt some type of way about the way I looked. And I didn't realize that it affected me so much until that instance with my daughter. And so I was just crying. I was like, I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. I was like, what did, what did you say? She said, I said my hair is beautiful. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> like, but for me, I didn't have that confidence, you know, at, at age five, I did not have that confidence. And she was like, yeah, she was like, my hair is gorgeous. And I told them my hair is gorgeous. And for me, I would have cried all the way home at that age, you know, um, just not seeing, not having that affirmation or that empowerment, that messaging, the, the, the people around me to see this is beautiful. Like she has pictures on her wall in her bedroom of like, gymnastic drawings of black girls of ballet ballerinas of black girls and their hairs are in puffs you know that i couldn't just go to walmart and get stuff like that back in the day and hang it up in my room so so yeah it it can be brutal and but these girls nowadays they're so strong and they have so much access to see beautiful black girls happy black girls proud black girls that look just like them you you definitely hit the nail on the head because coming up in, in, in my age, we didn't have, you had a, a few black Barbie dolls, maybe one or two black cabbage patches, but you yeah. didn't have all that we have now. You go to Walmart, you go to Target, you see 50 million different dolls of every shade. Now you see the the bar, the black Barbie dolls that I saw the cutest one in Walmart and my daughter bought it. The little black Barbie doll with vitiligo. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. But I tried, you know, I encourage my daughter now. Be who you are. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not beautiful. So she loves she likes to wear her hair like Prince. So, you know, you know how Prince used to wear his hair back in the day. That's the way she likes to wear her hair. 
you know, like Michael Jackson and, and things like that. You know, of course, she loves the Madonna and, and Debbie Gibson and all of that. And she's a, a, a pure 80s child, but she's like, it is what it is. She doesn't care what you say. She's going to dress the way she wants to dress, even if it's polka dots and stripes. You know, but she's embracing being this little black girl. Like I say, I encourage it. You know, I show it to her. And we keep going. So, gosh, I just love the fact that we're seeing more Black girl magic and Black girl power on mm -hmm. TV now. So I think that's, that's, that's a big part of why the, the little Black girls are now starting to be themselves and come into their own because mm -hmm. we're seeing it more. And mm -hmm. now you have people are telling you, embrace your, you know, your, your natural hair. Stop doing this and this and this. So I think now we're really coming back to the natural, the brave, and we're really coming away from the Caucasian look. You have some that still wear the, the lace fronts or whatever, but I, I don't like all of that. Just give me some braids or let me uh, wear my hair out in an afro and mm -hmm. keep it moving. That's just me. Yeah. So you could, you could go to the next slide, sis. And again, I want, this is a reminder. I want you women to know, light skin doesn't make you beautiful and dark skin doesn't make you ugly. We're beautiful in all shades, whether you range from light to dark. You're beautiful either way. It doesn't matter. Don't let the world tell you that you're not beautiful when you know you are. You go stand in that mirror every day and you say, you know what? I am beautiful. I'm a beautiful black queen. I am enough. Matter of fact, let me change that. Let me pull that back up. Because let, let me go back to, to your confidence right here, sis. Oh. Uh, right. So you get in that mirror and you say, I am ambitious. I am determined. I am beautiful. I am more than enough. I am confident and I am worthy. So that's your yeah. daily reminder. Mm -hmm. So you could go to the next slide, sis. And so a Daisy Cadet says, colorism upholds values of white supremacy. Again, Lauren said it, and you said it, Janelle. It goes back to the slave days. Yeah. And Marcus Garvey says, the black skin is not a badge of shame, but rather a glorious symbol of national greatness. And I absolutely couldn't agree more with that. You can go to the next one, sis. Oh yes. Woo! This one is my favorite. <laughs> Body image, honey. Let's talk about this, baby. What do you see? So, Janelle, I'm gonna start with you. When you wake up in the morning and you you know you're getting yourself ready for work or you're getting yourself ready for your day, what do you see when you look in the mirror? What do you see? I see myself as a work in progress at this point. I feel like I'm not 100% where I wanna be, but I'm determined. I have that tenacity and audaciousness to know that I can achieve where I wanna be. I know I'm a beautiful woman. I know my worth now. I Once you have went through some things to understand what your worth is, I now know my worth as a woman. So I know that what I was, where I was in life and where I am right now. And I know that I'm beautiful. Don't nobody got to tell me that. I look in the mirror and I see that I'm a beautiful black queen. And I'm thankful to God for allowing me to have that and, and allowing me to know my worth. Right, right. So, Miss Lauren, when you wake up and you're getting your day started and you look in the mirror, what do you see? I see someone who I'm not trying to live up to any type of expectations anymore. You know, so mm -hmm. if if I want to look like a whole hot mess, I'm going to look like a whole hot mess. 
<laughs> I'm not going to feel like I have to look a certain way. I have to dress a certain way. I have to, you know, do things or I have to do things to my body. I am just comfortable with myself. You know, I'm at a place where I choose how I want to look. I choose how I want to feel, how I want to dress, how much weight I'm going to be. You know, I don't, I, I kind of, re I, I release that pressure. You know, I release that pressure and it feels great. <laughs> it feels so good. Yes, because everything, society, the media, what we've been told in our households affects our body image because they say you have to be a certain weight to be beautiful or you have to be a certain height to be beautiful. So what I see when I look in the mirror, when I get up in the morning to start my day, I just see ashes. I see this fupa. I see my little A cup breast. I see these flabby arms. That's what I see when I get up. I just see me. Y'all are going to get whatever body I give you. You know, I'm loving, I'm, I'm embracing again. I have a mama body. My baby, yes, my baby is 11, but hey, I'm embracing it. I'm embracing this fupa or mommy's apron or kangaroo pouch. I'm embracing it. It is what it is now. You know, if I, I'm like you, Lauren, if I feel like getting up and I want my hair all over the place, I'm just going to let my hair be all over the place. You know, that, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Period. I'm going to allow myself to look a hot mess because getting up every day, putting on makeup, that's not who I am. I really don't even wear makeup. I wear, I put on lipstick and I put on some eyelashes. I don't, I don't like all that, that makeup pounded on my face. I don't like all of that. I don't. I don't knock anybody that does and gets up and spends 45 minutes in the mirror putting all this makeup on. I don't knock anybody. But me, I'm just, I'm just asking. What you see is what you get. You can go to the next slide, sis. Woo! <laughs> oh, here we go. Why is body image an issue? Ms. Lauren, if you want to take that question, you're, you're more than welcome. <laughs> Definitely. Um, you know, for, I would say for African American women, you know, um, we've always been stereotyped to have a specific type of body, you know, curvaceous, the big butt, the, you know, just, just everything like that. And so body images within the black community, it's so, so, so it's, it's frustrating <laughs> because for women, you know, if you don't have this type of body for black women, you know, we're often talked about or, you know, we'll be called certain names or or even if like even jokes like, oh, you're not black. You you don't even have a butt, you know, things like that. Body image, body image is just crazy for black women to deal with. It's it's something that I feel like we've struggled with. And then also our bodies are always sexualized. The black woman's body is more sexualized than any other w woman of any other race, you know, because it, it sends back so many different reasons, so many different things. But yes, we were raped. We were used as objects, you know, as slaves. But even towards even even to this day, we're still, you know, looked at as objects on videos, on on social media, on on, on reality shows, our bodies are always overly sexualized to the point where it feels like within our race, you can't even have a healthy relationship with the opposite sex because we're often so over-sexualized with our bodies to where it's like, oh no, you can't be friends with a man as if we are nothing good for just sex. And so our bodies are so important. It's important for us to preserve and protect our bodies, protect the perception of our bodies, the image of our bodies. It's important for us to redefine what our bodies are. Our body is it's, it's just a physical extension of ourselves. 
You know, our mind is what's important, our spirit and our soul and our bodies are just the physical aspect of who we are. But that's not what the narrative has been written about years over years over years. You know, they we and you look at movies, you know, if you have a, a scene, an intimate scene, a sex scene in a movie with a black woman is rough, it's, it's rough, it's wild, it's it's kind of like animalistic. But if it's a, a woman that's not black, then it's passionate, it's sensual, it's so delicate. You know, our bodies are just being defined by other people's other than ourselves. And oftentimes a lot of young girls, you know, we take that on. We take it on because of what we see. We take it on of what we've been told. You know, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't wear that, your butt too big, this and that. You know, so we're often defined by our bodies, our body image. It can either make you or break you based on how you were raised, what you've seen, your experiences. Um, it's a really tough subject. Wow. You you really hit on everything that I was gonna say in regards to Man, you but I, could, Lord. I could absolutely piggyback off of what you said because what you said is so accurate. If you scroll, if every time you get on social media, the first thing that pops up, at least you know when I when like when I get on Instagram or Facebook, is these women that are have their butts out, you know, with, with thongs on, you know, that that's that's the way they pose now is, is with their butts out, you know. Um and like you say, you look at and then you know what, sis, let me say this. Men don't make it any better either. Mm -hmm. Because men will say, I want a woman who uh you remember the song Brick House? Mm-hmm. 36, 24, 36 yeah. was, was the body that you had to have to be beautiful. Well, you know what, babe? You're going to get this 24, 52, 83. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get this three liter, bottle, this three liter bottle or this high seat fruit punch jug or something. But um, when it comes to why do I think body image is an is a issue? Like you say, the way we're the way we're sexualized on, on TV. You know, I've seen black girls that don't have big butts and you know they're talked about. So here you are, you have these women that are running out trying to go get butt lifts, they're trying to go get breast implants. Because you have people that are telling you. You have family that is telling you, not just society, but you have the people in your home that are telling you that that talk about you and make you feel bad. Girl, that outfit ain't gonna look right on you, girl. Your butt not big enough. But girl, why you got that outfit on? You, your breasts aren't big enough. So not only do you have the society, but you have, you, you know, the people closest to you that make you feel like your body is an issue. Janelle, you got, do you have anything to add on to that? Yes, and that calls these women out here to do all this crazy stuff, getting fake boobs, getting fake behind getting body done that's not what god intended you to have that's not about he blessed you with you got here buying a man-made body based off of what these other people are doing and other people are saying and you putting your life at risk and stuff like that by going into life because of what the social society and what the media is telling and showing and, and that's like that's not no, it. That's not the way to go. But that's like the old saying, "Sex sells." You know, I, I look at K. Mich I look at K. Michelle, and K. Michelle, all the things that she went to to try to fit in to this bubble. She went through a lot of help. I mean, ever she started out on the black market. And it's and it's so sad because you have these women that that want these bodies so bad that they're dying behind. Yeah. It's a young lady I was reading about um, that went to Mexico to have a, a, a gastric sleeve and died on the table. Mm. Look at Kanye West mother. Kanye West mother wanted a tummy tuck. She wanted, I believe, a breast reduction. 
and was told health wise she did not qualify. So she went and found a doctor that would do it and she ended up passing away. Yeah. These are the risks that we're taking for our bodies to look a certain way. These are everyday risks that we're taking. And I think it's absolutely sad. So you could go to the next slide, sis. We could go ahead and finish elaborating. Hmm. So I listed three aspects of body image. Aspect number one is the way you see yourself. And that's why I asked, how do you see yourself when you look in the mirror, when you get up and you start your day? How do you see yourself? And then if you go to aspect number two, how do you feel about yourself? The way you feel about yourself, how do you feel about yourself? And then you have number three, the way you think about yourself. Number three is, aspect number three is absolutely important because the way you think affects the way you feel and it affects the way you see yourself. So if you get up and you think you're ugly, you're going to feel ugly and you're going to see yourself as being ugly. Hence, you see these women that are running to these doctors that are wanting tummy tucks, they're wanting BBLs, they're wanting breast implants, they're wanting lip injections, they're wanting uh, the, the, the Botox to thin out, you know, the clear out the wrinkle lines. Embrace it. But in order to do that, you have to first change the way you think. So let me ask you ladies, how do, what is one thing that you, okay, so let, let me, let me go back. Give me one or two things that you could say to change the way you think about yourself. What can you do to change the way you think? Like I stated in my slide earlier, we can speak affirmation of self-love. Hmm. I am ambitious. I am beautiful. I am more than enough. Okay, what else? Miss Lauren, uh, one or two things that you could, that would help change the way you think of yourself. Um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta make sure you're surrounded by the right people. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times it don't matter how far you try to get, you know, you set all these goals, but if you're still hanging around crabs, you're going to be stuck in a barrel with crabs. Ooh. You know, you, you can't continue to allow people to have an impact on your life when they're not even making an impact in their own life. And so you never want to be the smartest person in the room. How are you going to learn and grow? You know, surround yourself around people who are like minded because I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that your vibe attracts your tribe. And so if you got a bunch of negative people around you or if it's a bunch of negativity going on around you, then that's what's going to be surrounded by you. And your circle can suffocate you because when you trapped into a circle and those people are just like you said, you felt like you were just empty not long ago. You know, you got to have people just like you pour into people. You got to have people that pour into you as well. So make sure that your environment is conducive to your purpose. Wow. Mm. And I saw, I saw a post that said, if you sit at the table with like-minded people, it won't sound like you're bragging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so powerful and so strong. Mm -hmm. That is Even beautiful. I love that. Because that does change the way you think about yourself. Because if you're sitting with people that think highly of themselves, you'll mm -hmm. start to think that as well. Mm -hmm. And like Ms. Lawrence says, if you sit at a table with a bunch of negative masses, guess what? You're going to start to, their energy is going to rub off on you and you're going to start to feel the same way as them. So... I just, looking at the way you feel about yourself, 
How in this moment right now, how do you feel about yourself right now in this moment? How do you feel about yourself? Do you feel that you're accomplished? Do you feel like uh, you, you, you still have some things to do? Are you okay with where you, you know, how do you feel about yourself right now in this moment? Well, I'm feeling empowered, y'all. I'm, I'm telling y'all, y'all have fed me today. I feel blessed to be in a room full of beautiful, knowledgeable, I mean, ambitious women. Like, y'all have wonderful spirits. I am blessed to be in this room right now. Honored. I feel empowered. I, I I'd say the same. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel I feel the exact same. And and I like that women can come together and encourage each other. You know, it's just something that is hard to find, is rare to find. So when it is found, then don't let that go. You know, keep creating opportunities like this, Ashley, for women to come together and speak positivity. You know, what this is, this is a moment where you're being used as a vessel to make a powerful change in the lives of others. Because even with this, it's being recorded, it can be shared. One person sees it. That's all you need is for even one person to see it, one person to hear it. And then that person can share it and they can speak what has been spoken today and change two, three, four, five, six lives. You know, so um, I'm empowered. I'm excited. And I just love that there is not a spirit of complacency because that complacency will have you stagnant. It'll have you not making anything, not ha making anything happen. It could have you just feeling low. So I just love that you're pushing for continuous change and positivity. So I appreciate you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that as well. And, you know, like I stated, this is me. I I'm speaking to me. You know, I, I'm I'm sharing me. I'm I'm being so transparent because this is what I struggle with. These are the things that I struggle with. So I know there are other women out there that are afraid to speak about their struggles. But again, I want to I want to unite and bring black women together and let black women know we all struggle in some way. But you do have someone on the sideline that's rooting for you, someone that's pushing for you to know that you're everything, that you're worthy, that you are loved, that you're beautiful, and that you're more than enough. So I will continue to do that. Okay, sis, you could go to the next slide. Alert from system UI server. Low battery. Mm. Alert com dot apple dot battery dash monitor. Okay. Low battery. Well, let me tighten it up and charge it, okay? Okay. <laughs> so on this slide, it says, how do you learn to love your body? Oh, my goodness. Number one is so imperative. Stop judging other people's bodies. Period. Stop doing it. Stop body shaming women that don't look like you. That's, that's one of the biggest things that we do as black women is we judge other people's bodies. Okay, God didn't make her to be 150 pounds. She's 115 pounds. Let her love that. Stop making her feel some kind of way because she's not as curvaceous as you. Come on, sis, and say that. Mm. Number two, get to know your body. Learn the ins and outs of your body. If there are things about your body you don't like, then you change it. Don't change it. And I'm going to say this again. Don't change it because society says you have to change it. You change it because you don't like it. That's it. That's what you do. You change it because you don't like it. Number three, you need to remember that your body is a piece of nature. God created our bodies in all different shapes and sizes, colors, height, length, weight. We're all created differently. 
how would you feel if God created us to look all the same? Mm -mm. I wouldn't like that. I, I don't want to look like everybody else. I want to look just like me. I want to look just like me. So, sis, I want to go back to number two. Getting to know your body. What have you done to get to know your body? Since you hit me with the point, we're going to go to number, you said number two? Uh-huh. What did you do to get to know your body? I can tell you what I did. Well, we'll be talking about getting to know my body. Because, <laughs> baby, when womanhood hit, Right, um, right. Hood, he, it was me and my granddad there, and he was explaining to me about a, a woman and you know and things of that nature then my great granddad told me about that about myself as a woman and things I, I needed to know and I learned my body as an adult for my own self not just when I was you know in my teenage years as an adult I learned my body by listening to it when I'm exhausted and I can feel my body feeling exhausted, I listen to my body. And I know, okay, I need to just take a breather, a day, a whole day off and just lay and don't do nothing, nothing, no housework, nothing. Everything gonna get done day four and I do everything prior to my day of relaxation and listen to my body. So listening to my body and knowing that um, it's tired, knowing when it needs to be, nourished knowing when i need to relax i can see it like my um like my grandmother my skin on, only breaks out on the time of the month that's the only time i get a breakout on my skin i know my grandma know my body too she be like yeah you you must be coming or something going i say yeah because my skin gets so bad and i know my body from that too and right when I'm feeling sick, I know I'm either over extenuating myself, I'm overworking myself or something, because I will get sick. My sinuses go with the acting crazy. It don't even have to be allergy season. season. And my allergies and my sinuses just get acting crazy and drain and everything. I just be sit, stuck in the bed and by the it shuts down. So like, okay, I'm overworking myself. Let me go ahead and relax. <laughs> and that's when I know. That's what I know. That's absolutely what we have to do is get to know our bodies. We have to be, you know, in tune with our bodies. We have to know, you know, when enough is enough. You know, when it's when it's time to relax your body, sit down and relax. You know, we're always trying to push and, and, and do more than what we're supposed to do instead of just relaxing and, and giving our bodies, you know, time to just get back to normal. Um Number one, I, I love how that specific statement is number one. Stop judging other people's bodies. Period. Okay. Stop Period. saying or making people feel bad because they have small breasts or they have small butts or they have big butts or they have big breasts or big arms or, or big legs. Stop doing that because everything that we you may think is beautiful, I think is ugly. Like I say, I hated my freckles. I hated them growing up. I despised them. I remember, you know, growing up, my mom used to have esoterica. That's the, the fade cream. And I used to put it on my face because people used to tease me about my freckles. But now that I'm older, oh, I love them because you're seeing people, like I say, I, I, like I said earlier, you have people that are running out here and they're going to get freckles tattooed on their face. You know, I've learned to embrace my little A cups. I've learned to embrace my fat belly. I've learned to embrace being short. This is the way God designed it. And if at any moment that I feel like I want to change it, I'm going to change it for me and not because of what someone else has said, or not because of what society says. I see posts on Facebook where people are dressed up 
in outfits and I go in and I see the comments and people will say, girl, now you know you too big to wear that. Or girl, you know you knew better than to order that outfit. You knew that outfit wasn't fit for your body. Why do we do that? As black women, we are torn down enough. Why continue to tear down someone else? What we should be doing is you should be helping that black queen adjust her crown. When it looks heavy, fix it for her instead of judging her. And that's one of the things that we as black women, we, we do not do. We do not lift, uplift, we do not encourage, we do not empower. We're always judging, yet failing to realize that that one finger you're pointing at someone or more pointing back at you. So I say that to say, stop judging other people's bodies. And ladies, remember, your body is a piece of nature. You can go to the next one, sis. Sis, you have spoken the truth on that. My goodness. <laughs> yes, indeed. I love this by Maya Angelou. I remember, sis, when we were putting this, this PowerPoint together. And when I came across that, because I feel like I'm a butterfly. And so Maya Angelou says, we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. So one of the things that we ladies need to do, everybody goes through a metamorphosis. And for those that don't know, a change. You have to learn to embrace the changes that you went through to achieve your beauty. And that's something we don't do. So get up in the morning. Go stand in that mirror and look at how beautiful you are. You know, I'm a mother. My body went through a lot of changes. I felt, you know, when I was pregnant, I thought I was most beautiful being pregnant when, and not realizing that I was beautiful the entire time. Not just pregnant, but I'm beautiful, period. I feel like me shedding my hurt and allowing myself to heal, I'm really now starting to embrace the true beauty of myself. Being able to shed those layers of hurt, shed those layers of trauma, shed the layers of, of the BS that you've gone through, shed the BS that you've taken your body through, and learning to embrace that you're beautiful learning to tune out what someone else has said or someone that has conditioned to make you believe that you're not beautiful. Shedding that, you know, has, has made me embrace the fact that I'm just a beautiful butterfly. Mm. And all the changes that I've gone through have prepared me to become this beautiful butterfly. Mm. Being in that dark place, being down in that hole, that was the change that helped me to realize how beautiful I was. Let me ask you, sis, before we go to the next slide. What change did you have to go through to see your real true beauty? Um, when me and my ex fiance broke up and he was out there cheating, Mm -hmm. and you know I was going through a lot at the time I was in school trying to plan things with the wedding things like that and he was just out there doing his thing and I had to realize I had to step back for a second and really like step out of me basically I had to step out of my whole self because I said no this is not um uh, he was trying to basically pull me out of my character, but I'm like, this is not you. So don't even feed into that. Right. Go ahead, break it off, break the engagement off and move forward with your life. And that's exactly mm. what I did. I moved forward with my life because I knew that he didn't see the, he saw, he sees the value now because he be still trying to get back with me, but he know that ain't no happen. However, mm -hmm. when I know my work, I'm like, no, this is not whom he was portraying himself to be. But I was giving him my all. And 
that's when you said that metamorphosis stage. I was still in the caterpillar stages, and then I started to go into the cocoon. And then when I emerged from that cocoon to the butterfly part, I said, okay, God, this is what you meant by this. This is what you said, be your 100% full potential. And when I was right there in that 100% full potential, opened up my eyes, put my, look, put my glasses on, <laughs> put that glasses on and say, this is what I need to be. I started walking on into that destiny. And it landed me right where I am today. I get I graduated college twice and gonna do it a third time to get that master's degree. So guess what? I'm gonna do it again. And I still obtained my goals. He was trying to tear me from my goals and make me feel like I was, you know, not wanted. But at the end of the day, I am. It's a hot commodity out here. And when you realize who you are as a woman and you don't have to set up for less, that's what I realized. Okay, well, I'm not about to settle then. I'm going to go ahead and continue to move forward on with my life and do what I got to do for me. Hmm. And you know, and that makes a lot of sense. That's like, you know, when God, uh, it's like, you know, when you go, it's like a, a, a phoenix. You know, when you've been in the dirt for so long, God picks you up and, and dusts you off mm. and polishes you up so you can actually see your real true life beauty. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Whew. here we go here we go and we're rolling towards the end of our conference but self-esteem confidentially confidentially yours let's talk about it hmm so sis i'll go first how do you define self-esteem? Hmm. How do you define it? Whew. That's, that's tough. How do you define self-esteem? Mm. Self-esteem. That's how much you appreciate and like yourself. Do you mm -hmm. know your value? Do you know your self worth? Mm. Do you even do you like the person you are? Mm. I'm gonna answer this one. My self esteem is medium. I'm gonna say medium because there are three types of self esteem. you have and we're gonna go into those and i believe that's the next slide sis. Did, was that the next slide yes ma'am all right so your three types of self-esteem but before we even go any further let's hang on let's let's yeah leave it right there on that leave it right there on that slide okay so because I want to talk about each of the three types of self-esteem. You have low self-esteem, you have high self-esteem, and then you have inflated. For me, I'm in between low and high. With low self-esteem, people they are people that do not value themselves and do not trust in their possibilities. And then you have the high self-esteem, which are people that accept and value themselves. So I say I'm in between because I'm still struggling to trust in my possibilities. It's a struggle every day. Am I going to, is Black Girl Interrupted going to be where I want it to be? Am I, am I pushing hard enough? Am I doing enough for myself? Am I loving myself like I'm supposed to? No, I'm not. Am I 
taking care of myself the way I'm supposed to? No, I'm not. Because I sit in this tiny little box that I've created for myself that I sit in alone. Because I feel like I'm not worthy enough. And those are things that I'm still dealing with. You know, I, I still fight every day. Again, I'm a work in progress. So I'm working on my esteem. It's a lot. If I go back to where I was a year and a half ago, oh yeah, it was low. Two years ago, maybe. Three years ago. Mm -hmm. Four years ago. My self-esteem was absolutely low. Because I did not value myself. I allowed mm -hmm. people to use me. I allowed people to mistreat me because I wanted to fit in. Because I wanted people to like me. But fast forward to today, I don't care if you like me or not. I'm still going to be Ashley at the end of the day. But my self-esteem has gotten better. You know, I've embraced, you know, when you go back to body image, I've embraced the fact that I've had three c I've, I've, I'm a mommy of three. I've had three C-sections. My little pooch may never go away. And I've accepted that. I've accepted that I'm short. I'm not going to grow anymore. I'm 42 years old. I'm not going to grow anymore. I'm going to forever be 5'2". Hey, it is what it is. You know. Um, but I'm learning to accept and value myself. So that's what I mean when I say I'm medium. Inflated. Huh. Mm -mm. No, we're not on it. I don't want to be inflated self-esteem. Because those are the ones that think they are better than others. They have no doubts about underestimating everyone else and have no doubts. I don't want an inflated self-esteem because I don't feel like I'm better than everybody. The only person I strive to be better is me yesterday. That's what I strive to be better than who I was yesterday, better than who I was last week, better than who I was last month, better than who I was last year. Better than who I was 10 years ago. That's what I strive to be. And it's okay, ladies, to correct yourself when, when you slipped up. It's okay for you to fall off a little bit, but just don't stay there. And that's what I'm learning in regards to building my self-esteem. Is I'm learning to be okay with not getting everything right the first time. I'm learning that. And though, And that's one of the things that affects your self-esteem is learning to be okay with messing up from time to time. It's okay. You're not going to always do it right the first time. But the more you, like you said, sis, the more you train for it, the better you become. So if you start speaking, and again, let's go back to the way you feel about yourself because you have to first change the way you think, which will alter the way you feel and the way you speak of yourself. So, sis, I'm gonna ask you again. There are three types of self-esteem. Which category do you think you fall? In? If we were talking about right now in this moment, looking back at yourself five years ago to today, where do you rank? I must say, I would, I would probably been low. I didn't value myself. I didn't care. I mean, I value myself to a point. I'm not going to let nobody disrespect me, but I was still going through the motions of still, like I say, learning my body, learning who I am as a woman. Today, I'm going to say I'm probably at medium high because I know who I am. I know what I bring to the table. I know um, where I am now is not where I was two or three years ago. And I'm grateful to God, but I'm truly thankful. But I know I got, you know, something I need to work on within myself. I got something I need to improve. And, and process improvement is a process. It's what's called process improvement. So I trust and believe that I'm going to get to where I need to be. Right. I know it's going to take and me some time. Oh, but yeah. I'm going to get where I need to be. Absolutely. I believe in that. So I'm grateful that I was where I was. I had low. So but see, I'm grateful for that. It was low. But I'm also grateful to where I am now that we're able to be here today and 
openly talking about that because that used to hurt my soul. I used to cry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and and that really does something to me. Now I'm not able, I'm not gonna cry on it no more because I'm stronger than I was a couple of years ago, and that's a blessing in the skies right there. So I'm just truly grateful to where I am now. Truly grateful. And when you talk, no, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're okay, sis. I'm done. And when you talk, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, and when you talk about self-esteem, that starts in in home, in the home. You know, you go back to everybody, you know, like I say, society does play a role in self-esteem but also in the home because you have mothers that tell their daughters, oh, you're ugly. You'll never be anything. You'll never amount to anything. No man is going to want you. Uh, you're not going to be this. You're not going to be that. And when you're told that, again, like I say, repetitively, you're going you're gonna to start to believe that. You're going to start to believe that, you know. I remember, you know, this was one of the reasons why I, I dyed my hair. So my natural hair color was uh, like a sandy blonde red. That's the hair color I was born with, and I hated it. And people would tease me about it. Oh, your hair looks so dirty. Oh, it's ugly. And I started to believe that. So I bleached my hair. I sure did. But now, I wish I would have never done it because now when I get my hair braided, I get it braided the same color my natural hair color used to be. Isn't it crazy? But that's what I allow people to tell me. You know, again, I'm embracing who Ashley is as not only a woman, but as a mother, you know. Yeah. So mothers, you know, if your moms, you know, to, to girls, boys, or both, start encouraging and uplifting your children because they deal with enough outside in the world that they don't need to come home and deal with the same type of abuse. Start telling your daughters how beautiful she is. Start telling your son how handsome he is. Start in, informing, you know, and letting your son know or your daughters know. Beauty comes in all shapes, heights, sizes. Start telling them that. You know, put them around positive people. And that's another thing that will help with the self-esteem. You know, that goes back to what Lauren was saying. When you're sitting at a table, at, at a table with a lot of negative Nancy's, you're going to start to believe what they're saying. But if you sit at a table with like-minded people, you'll start to believe what they're saying, which in tune will help to boost your self-esteem because you'll start to see the worth and the value in yourself. Mm. Like I say, I know some inflated, I know people that have inflated self-esteem that feel like they are better than everybody. But don't realize that God can humble you in, in, in a matter of moments. So let's Work on if your self-esteem is low, let's work on getting to medium. And then let's work on getting to the high. You know, let's let's come from devaluing ourselves and not being able to trust in our possibilities to where we're learning to accept and value ourselves, where we're learning to love ourselves, where we're learning to embrace all the flaws that we are going to encounter or that we have. Embrace those flaws. And if it's something that you don't like, you change it for you, not for somebody else. Don't change it because this is what the world says for you to do. Don't change it because this is what society or TV or what you see in a magazine. Make these changes for you that will lead you in a positive direction. That's what we need to do in regards to our self-esteem. You can go to the next one, sis. All right, man. Oh, yes. Oh. So what causes low self-esteem, which I really kind of, which 
I guess me ending that, roll me into the next question. So I do have a slide up that says, black girl, don't be afraid to use your voice. Your thoughts, opinions, and ideas are just as important as anybody else. When you speak, baby, you better speak with boldness and with purpose. You have courage, you be confident, and you always be true to yourself. You don't be true to anybody else. You be true to yourself. Mm. Live your life fearlessly. Your voice has great power. Do not be afraid to utilize it when needed. You're mm. not, let me, let me, let me stress this. You're not an angry black woman. You're a woman who has something important to say. And not only does your voice matter, but so do you. Powerful. Yes. So to you, sis, that, and I'm speaking to your little black girl. So I'm speaking to the younger you. Okay? And that's who we need to start speaking to as our younger you, which will help vicariously encourage and grow the older you. So to you and the younger you, Janelle, do not let anyone silence you. You do not let anyone's thoughts or opinions or ideas about you affect you. You speak with boldness and purpose, but in order to speak with boldness and purpose, you have to first find your purpose. What is your purpose in life? Dig deep, go into that younger you. You get what I'm saying? Go into the younger you. Yeah. For you to figure out what your purpose is. You need to be confident and be true to you. Don't be to anybody. You be true to you. You live life fearless. Use your voice at all times. Don't ever be afraid to utilize your voice when it's needed. You know, like the people say, pick your battles wisely. Learn when to speak and when to be quiet. Because I'm not going to use the word shut up. You Use your voice. Know when to speak and when to remain silent. You're not angry. You're important, baby. And you have a lot to say. So you speak. You utilize the platform that's set before you to speak. So let's go on into what causes low self-esteem. We can go ahead and roll to the next slide. Because we've already spoken on what causes low self-esteem. That the people around you, the people in your household, the people you work with, the people that you socialize with affects your self-esteem. But now we're going to go on to how can we fix it? Baby, this is rolled through each and every entire slide that we presented, presented to each and every lady today. And that's the positive affirmations. Use positive affirmations. And if you want to utilize those, get you a sticky pad. And you write down a positive affirmation. Let me pull it back up. So what you do is get you some sticky, some sticky notes. And you're right on each and every last one of those sticky notes. I am ambitious. I am determined. I am beautiful. I am more than enough. I am confident and I am worthy. You repeat that to yourself every day. You get up in the morning and you say that before you start your day. Before you go to bed, you say that. You say those affirmations. You don't have to utilize these these specific affirmations. Come up with your own, but encourage yourself every day. Like Donald Lawrence says, sometimes you have to get up and you have to encourage yourself. Sure enough. Number two, stop comparing yourself to others. Let, let me elaborate on this when I say stop comparing yourself to others. Let me, let me say this. God designed everybody's path different. 
Your track does not look like mine. Everybody is going to have a different route. God did not design our path to be easy. Mm. So you have to stop comparing yourself to others. Okay, Janelle, you made it to the finish line before I got there. That's okay, because guess what? I'm on the way. I'm in route to the finish line. And that's what we have to start doing is start normalizing that your path does not look like mine. For real, it doesn't. Your road is not as smooth as mine. I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall down. I'm going to scrape my knees. But you know what? Get back up and you keep doing it. Because just because you see the finished product, you don't know what that person went through to get there. You don't know how many storms that they had to endure. You don't know how many losses they, they had to take before they got to the win. So stop comparing yourself to others. And another thing that's not on this slide, stop, 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 ladies. Stop doing this. It's putting a time limit on or an age limit on Okay. You didn't get that house when you made when you turned 25. You were 35 when you got it. That's okay. You still got your house. You didn't get married at, at 22 like you thought. You got married at 32 or 42 or 52. It's okay. Stop comparing your life to someone else. That's one of the things that we do as black women is we constantly compare ourselves to other black women. Again, I'm going to say this once again. You do not know how many L's, losses, that that woman took to finally get to her duck. Her win. Number one, you need to set realistic, and, and number one, you need to set realistic expectations. You have your expectations versus reality. We as black women, we put so many expectations on ourselves and not embracing the reality of things. Expect the disappointment. Expect the failure because that's the reality of it. No, let me, I'm sorry, let me say that in reverse. We set these expectations, but in reality, we're going to fail. We're going to slip. We're going to fall. That's the reality of things. We have these expectations. Oh, I, I, I expect to be married by 25. I expect to have my first child at 27. I expect to have my second child at, at, at 29 or 30. I expect to be in my house by the time I'm 30, or I expect to do this. When in reality, that may not be the case. You may have a setback. And when I say setback, you may have a financial setback. You may have a mental setback. You may have a physical setback. Those are the reality of things. So stop putting expectations on the way things are supposed to go. Yes, we expect things to be perfect. We want them to be, but that's not the reality. And that's how you fix your self-esteem. You set those proper, realistic expectations. That 40 pounds you want to lose, you're not going to lose that 40 pounds in, in five days. Stop it. Regardless of what you see on, on TV or what you're being told, that 40 pounds is not going to go away in, in 10 days. That your pregnancy body, it takes nine months for your body to get ready for pregnancy. It takes a year for it to get back to normal. That's the reality. Yeah, we expect to, oh, yes, you know, I, I, I'm 200 pounds and, and I'm nine months pregnant. And we expect the moment we had a baby that we're back at our pre-pregnancy weight. That's not the reality. So we have to start setting those realistic expectations. We have to stop comparing ourselves to others. And we have to start using positive affirmation. Again, it takes, what, 21 days to break a habit? Or 30, 21 days to break a habit? So if you start telling yourself every day in the morning when you wake up, I'm beautiful, I'm worthy, I'm confident, I'm enough. 
And then you say that to yourself at night. Do that every day and watch that change the way you think. The change, it will change the way you see yourself and it'll change the way you speak for yourself. That's what we need to start doing, Black women. We are queens, baby. And it's time for us to pick those crowns back up and put them back on and walk like the queens we were born to be. And that's how you fix your self-esteem. And again, start hanging around those like-minded people. Start hanging around the people that want to see you win, that encourage you, that empower you, that uplift you. You can go to the next slide, sis. Here we are. So the takeaways from that, you're finding you celebrate your strength. Celebrate those small accomplishments more so than relishing in the big accomplishments. That's what you want to do. Celebrate those small milestones. I'm not saying the big ones don't matter, but the small ones count too. Number two, you need to learn that it's okay to be different. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay that you're five two. And she's five eight. That's okay. Learn and be okay with your size, your skin tone, your hair. If those are things that you don't like, again, you change it for you. Don't change it for the world. You change for you. You change to conform for you, not for what the world says you're supposed to be. And number three, I have to tell myself this. You have to understand that failure is a part of the growth process. Do you know how many times, ladies, that I've fallen, that I've bumped my head, that I've gotten discouraged or distracted, and I've just wanted to lay there? Let me say this. So when my father passed away, ladies, that took a lot from me. Mm-hmm. It took a whole lot because I, I fought so hard to get out of that dark place I was in. So when my father passed away, it set me back even further. I really lost the light and the way in regards of doing Black Girl Interrupted. I was done. I said it. I, I made a post on Facebook and said, you know, I can't do this anymore. Until that little voice in my head said, Ashley, like Miss Lauren said, you have to go back to the why. Why hmm. did you create Black Girl? Hmm. I created Black Girl Interrupted out of pain. And I'm going to say this again. I'm going to repeat it again. Black Girl Interrupted came from a place of pain. Black Girl Interrupted, my pain, my trauma is what fueled me to start this. I wanted to be the voice for that little Black girl or that Black woman that's afraid to speak. I wanted that little Black girl to say, you know what, Mommy, I share her story. I wanted that Black woman to look at me and say, girl, we share the same story. I feel, I, matter of fact, I don't feel, I understand you. I know that pain. I'm familiar with that pain. I recognize it. So my very first episode, uh, I, suffered, I battled depression and anxiety. So my very first episode was about 20 minutes long. And it was of me crying and being transparent. Because that was another thing. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if that's what I wanted to do. Could I be transparent? Could I be open? Could I be vulnerable with hundreds of people and not worry about judgment? So I took a step. I stepped out on faith with it. I said, you know what it is, what it is. If they like it, they like it. They don't, they don't. So that very first episode, I got 22 messages that said, oh my God, Ashley, I never would have known that you go through that. You look so happy in your pictures. You're always smiling. I didn't know, you know, you and your kids are always happy. 
not knowing my story. So as I as I progress to go on to be transparent, the more people started to gravitate to me. And today I'm celebrating my strength. I'm learning that it's okay for me to be different. I'm now learning to understand that failure is a part of my growth process because I've stumbled along the way in doing Black Girl Interrupted. I've stumbled along the way in regards to my self-esteem. I've stumbled along the way with allowing people to mistreat me. I'm learning now that, hey, you can come out of that little box and you're going to be fine. So, ladies, I want you to, again, find and celebrate your strength. What makes you strong? Celebrate that. Learn. You're different. God created you differently. Learn and understand and accept that failure is a part of the growth process. That goes back to the Maya Angelou statement. Before you can become a butterfly, you have to first love the change. We have to love that. We have to learn to love that. We have to learn to embrace the change in the beauty of the pain. We have to love that. You can go to the next slide, sis. Sis, you spoke a mouthful of that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> you could go. So, with Black Girl Interrupted podcast, y'all stay connected with me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm live every Tuesday, every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Come follow me on Clubhouse. My name is Ashley Pitts. I have created a, a room under Black Girl Interrupted. Come join the room. Come sit down and let's have these empowering conversations. Because, again, the conversations don't just stop here. Continue to encourage. Continue, continue to empower. Continue to uplift your sisters. If you see her crown falling, just tilt it a little bit and say, hold your head up, sis. You got it. Continue to speak those positive affirmations. Continue to learn to love yourself. Learn again that failure is a part of the growth process. You're not going to get it right the first time. Stop comparing yourself to others. You know, start sitting at the table and surrounding yourself with like-minded people that want to see you win, that will encourage you, that will, that will push you to your fullest potential. Dig down and get into that younger you. Once you fix the younger you, you'll be a better grown you. I'm sorry, a better adult you. But we got to first kill that little girl inside first. We have to do that. We have to love that little girl. We have to heal that little girl. Absolutely have to do. And again, my name is Ashley Pitts, and I just, I thank everybody. And I'm done speaking. Miss Lauren, I'm going to let you go ahead and, and bring this to a close, Miss Lauren. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, um, I will just give um, just a, a few quick words because I actually have to meet up with family, but I just want to say this, this conference, this experience was just, it was beyond my wildest imagination. And it's, it touched on topics that needed to be discussed. And a lot of these topics, they are not discussed within our community. They aren't discussed with amongst black women. And so I hope that, you know, everyone who, who watches the video can take that away and say, these are issues that I've struggled with internally. And I am so glad that someone talked about it externally because it's not until they're discussed externally until we can start 
changing things until we can start doing better and being better and being more open, being more confident, being more expressive. You know, as black women, we hold so much inside because we're taking on the world. We're doing so much. We're taking care of people. And then we hold everything inside until we're not taking care of ourselves. And then we just implode. We implode. We lose it. We break down. We crash. And so having opportunities and spaces like this, not just a, a safe space, but a transformative space to where people's lives are different after experiencing it, it's needed. It's needed within our community. It's needed, you know, amongst all of us. And um, I am just so, so, so grateful. I'm filled with gratitude to have that opportunity to be a part of something like this with you ladies, with Ashley, uh, with Janelle, Ashley, this space that you curated is just amazing, you know? And so I hope that uh, women can feel comfortable to be confident. You know, a black, black women, we're, we're oftentimes, we have all these labels that we have to shake off. So I hope that women can feel comfortable to be confident and to be who they are, no matter what, no matter how they look, and to really embrace the fact that they are beautiful, they are strong. And so um, I hope, you know, just that parting word is inhale confidence and exhale doubt. Just continue to do that. And we will be fearless. We will be confident. We will be strong. We'll be united. You know, um, that that you have to we have to understand and we have to believe that we have the power to change our lives. We're powerful ve vessels, you know, and so we don't need to be quiet. We don't need to be reserved. We just need to be ourselves. Beautiful, strong, intelligent black women. And so I just encourage everyone to take action. Take action with your life, with your business, with your dreams, with your goals, with people, you know, whatever it is, take action because fear don't live here. Fear does not live inside you. Fear does not exist. It's something that you created. It's something that you created. It's just an emotion. And who has the power over your emotions? We do. We have the power. And so thank you so much for this experience and for this opportunity um, it has uh, it has honestly just been amazing. It's been so amazing. And so thank you so much. You're more than welcome, Miss Lauren. I appreciate you coming on, jumping on. You guys, y'all connect with me, Lauren. She is on Clubhouse. Lauren Lacey. No, Lauren McDonald on Clubhouse. Follow her on Instagram, Urban Business Directory. When I tell you this lady, right here this woman she's not a lady she's a woman a beautiful black woman who drops gems every chance she can in every room miss lauren i want to say thank you personally for being a part of this conference today i absolutely am astounded and honored that you accepted my invitation i look forward to doing more um with you um in regards to our uplifting of black women, mm -hmm. I absolutely, Miss Janelle, I want to say thank you for you stepping in today and letting everybody know. We're going to go ahead and flash everybody across the screen. There you are. You have Miss Lauren Lacey, who is an Atlanta GA resident. She is by way of Savannah. And I do want you to know she is the owner of Urban Business Directory, which is one of the fastest growing black business directory and marketing services network, marketing service network in the US. This is so accurate. Lauren is, is passionate, is empowering black owned businesses. She teaches black entrepreneurs how to be digital powerhouses within their industry so they can run, I'm sorry, grow and scale their business. Lauren obtained her bachelor and master's degree in English before managing the digital marketing portfolios for companies such as Master, MasterCard Gift, Amex Gift Card, GSMA, excuse me, Ashbury Automotive Group, and Thematic. Lauren is not only successful within her career, but baby, when I tell you she runs a busy household, <laughs> she is not only a wife, but a beautiful mother of five. Three, three handsome 
little boys and two beautiful little girls, one of who happens to be my very best friend. Her name is Madison. <laughs> I know she's bad, but y'all leave my baby alone. Sweet as pie. Just as cute. And I love, love, love everything about Miss Lauren. So again, Miss Lacey, I want to say thank you. I am so grateful to have been graced with your presence. I am glad everyone else got a, a chance to get to know you and hear from you. Again, y'all follow her, Urban Business Directory. I'm telling you, it's the truth, y'all. It is the ish. Thank it's you. The, the ish. <laughs> Thank you, so Ashley. I appreciate you. You're welcome. And I'm not going to hold you up. You can go ahead and, and bow out gracefully. You go and you hang out with the family, hugs and love, and I will see you on Clubhouse. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was so great meeting you, Janelle. I definitely want to connect. And Ashley, you are just amazing. Again, I'm just, I'm honored. I'm thankful. I thank God for you. Thank you so much, ladies. Y'all have a great day. You too. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dove. Love you. And Miss Janelle, go ahead and put yours up too. All right. So I want to explain who Miss Janelle Dixon is, baby. When I tell you, with, I, I was graced with her presence on Clubhouse. We somehow ended up in a room. I can't remember the exact room, but um, I don't regret it. Um, and Miss Janelle is a Florida resident, honey. She is the owner of Anointed Blessings LLC, which is a holistic beauty, skincare, and hair growth line. And honey, this, this here doesn't even sound enough, but she is passionate about empowering Black women to be confident within themselves. She also teaches women how to grow healthy hair. She teaches and encourages young black girls as well as women on how to build your self-confidence. Janelle obtained her degrees in business administration and communications from PSC and UWL. Go follow Ms. Janelle. Again, she is um, Anointed Blessings LLC. Y'all go follow her right now. And of course, here's your girl, the creator of Black Girl Interrupted. I'm absolutely a Louisiana girl with those deep Texas roots. I'm a single mother of three, and I've encountered so many obstacles in life that I felt it was time to share my stories to not only help, but to encourage. I felt it was time to empower and help ladies to love themselves all over again. It's time to adjust those crowns and walk like the queens we were born to. So, sis, I'm going to let you, do you have any parting words you want to say before we go ahead and bring the conference to a close? Sis, it's on you. Do you have anything you want to say? I'm not sure. We've been having technical issues with this all day, but hey. I do want to say to each and every person. I got it, sis. In the, <laughs> there you go. Anything yeah. you want to say about today? I have been truly blessed to have uplifted my spirits. I am glad to be here. And I look forward to the second annual BGI Black Girl Interrupted Baby Women Empowerment Conference. I am excited. We have, put the camera on so y'all can see me one more time. <laughs> I mean, it has just really uplifted my spirit today. I'm feeling good inside. I thank you, Ashley. I enjoyed working with you on this. We have, ladies, we have been up since had me up last night. <laughs> Late, I did. I did. <laughs> but guess what? It was, it was all worth it. And I'll do it again for next year. I absolutely. Um, for the viewers, uh oh, there we go. I do want you to know um, that I am, uh, again, you can catch me every Tuesday, every Thursday night. I am on YouTube. Um, you can catch me every Tuesday, every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, yep. I can't never get my hands right on this camera. But uh, this young lady, you may catch on a couple of episodes with me as well. But check out your girl tomorrow night um, in honor of Pride. I am doing an episode in regards to this. So y'all check out your girl tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. But don't forget, 
call it. I finally got it right. I got it right. I got my hand right. I'm so happy. I never could get these things right on camera. Um, but check out, check us out all the time. And I appreciate each and every black queen that tuned in. I do want to say, shine queen. It's time for the black girls to rock. Adjust your crown and walk like the queen that God designed you to be. And without further ado, I want to say love you. God bless you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.